The book of Numbers, chapter 10. Numbers, chapter 10. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Numbers, chapter 10, verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver. Of a whole piece shall you make them, that you may use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. And so trumpet blast, various trumpet blast, would indicate God's leading for his people, at least in part. Three, and when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to you at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if they blow but with one trumpet, then the princes, which are heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto you. When you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward. When you blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. 7. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but you shall not sound an alarm. Too bad they didn't have walkie-talkies or cell phones back in those days, but God supplies, and since they didn't have modern communications, God devised this system of communicating involving signals blown on one or two trumpets. The trumpets made it clear when it was time to march out or when it was time to gather at the tabernacle. Verse 8. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. And if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies also. In the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am the Lord your God. The trumpets were to be used once Israel was in the promised land as well. When an enemy attacked and God heard the trumpet, he would come down and he would lead Israel to victory. Now, obviously God didn't need to hear a trumpet blast to know that his people were in trouble. But he devised this system, which involved Israel having some responsibility. Verse, or let's continue. And they also were to be blown at major festivals and on the first day of the month, too, during the new moon festivals. This was done to celebrate God's presence. And as I said, this was Israel's responsibility. And God would respond to these trumpets when it was called for. 11. And it came to pass on the 20th day of the second month, in the second year, that the cloud was taken up from off the tabernacle of the testimony. Now, Israel had been at Mount Sinai for an entire year. So it had been a long rest for God's people, but now it's time to move on. 12. And the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai, and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. Verse 13. 
And they first took their journey according to the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. So after nearly a year, or about a year at Sinai, God said it's time to go. And God's glory cloud ascended from the tabernacle. And that meant that it was time for the tribes to move out according to the divine instructions. 14. In the first place went the standard of the camp of the children of Judah, according to their armies. And over his host was Nashon, the son of Amminadab. 15. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Issachar was Nethaniel, the son of Zuar. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Zebulon was Eliab, the son of Helon. And the tabernacle was taken down. And the sons of Gershon and the sons of Marari set forward bearing the tabernacle. Actually, the structure of the tabernacle was packed up and put upon six wagons, and the, which were provided by God for this purpose. Verse 18, And the standard of the camp of Reuben set forward according to their armies, and over his host was Elizur, the son of Shedeur. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Simeon was Shalumaniel, the son of Zerish Hadai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Gad was Elas Asaph, the son of Deuel. And the Kohathites set forth, bearing the sanctuary. And the other did set up the tabernacle against they came. And the standard of the camp of the children of Ephraim set forward according to their armies. And over his host was Elishama, the son of Amenahud. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Manasseh was Gamaliel, the son of Pedazur. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Benjamin was Abidan, the son of Gideoni. And the standard of the camp of the children of Dan sent forward, which was the rearward of all the camps throughout their host. And over his host was Ahiezer, the son of Amishhadad. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Asher was Pegid, the son of Akron. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Naphtali was Ahira the son of Enan. Thus were the journeyings of the children of Israel according to their armies when they set forward. This was a huge convoy. Massive. Made the wagon trains of the Old West that seemed to go on forever look like absolutely nothing. Possibly three million people with tents, wagons, animals. And the Holy Tabro Tabernacle move out across the desert. What a massive movement this was. 29. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Regul, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, We are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do you good. For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. Well, Moses tells his father, why don't you come with us? God's going to bless us, and you become a part of us. And you're welcome, and you can be blessed by God as well. In verse 30, And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land, and to my kindred. Which probably was a mistake on his part. Not just for him, but for his descendants. I mean, the Lord is offering him 
an opportunity to become a part of God's chosen people. And you don't take him up on that. You're passing up a huge blessing. And the same is true today. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, shall be saved. And so many people say, No, I don't think I'll I don't think I'll accept that offer. Well, you're gonna be sorry in the long run. Thirty one. And he said, Leave us not, and it's Moses, I pray you, for as much as you know how we talk, we are to encamp in the wilderness, and you may be to us instead of eyes. Now this had nothing to do with the direction, the general direction that the camp of Israel would take because that was being provided by the Lord with the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. But evidently Moses' father-in-law was very well versed when it came to the wilderness. He, he knew where to go. He knew the details of the area you know he could he could probably find water and 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 know just the ins and outs the particulars and for that reason he would be helpful verse 32 and it shall be if you go with us yes it shall be that what goodness the lord shall do unto us the same shall we do unto you now you're going to be blessed as one of God's people, just like we are, because you'll be assimilated into our group. 33. And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days' journey. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in the three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day when they went out of the camp. Well, the first leg of Israel's journey lasted three days. They moved during the day, and they camped at night. And God was leading them every step of the way. 35. And it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them who hate you flee before you. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. And, and these verses contain the battle cry of Moses. His words are based on the Lord's promise to Abraham to bless those who bless him and curse those who curse him. So he is using scripture as the foundation of his prayer, which is always the most effective prayer. And as they moved out, into new territory, Moses would petition God to come through like he said he would. 